I like bodies. I love like if you have a dick, I I love I love dicks. It doesn't matter the size, the length, whatever. Welcome, dear viewer, to my God of Porn Adult Film Star interview series. With more than 66 million video views on Pornhub, Rebel Rider is a true industry natural. Since joining the industry in 2019, she's become a hugely popular adult performer. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Rebel Rider. What do you enjoy most in your line of work? Um, so I just enjoy that every day is different. Um, I get to meet a lot of people, travel to new places, experience different things all in a, you know, a relatively safe environment. <laughs> Do you find it stressful to be on a porn set? <laughs> um, for me, it's like when I first started, it was very unnatural because I'm pretty shy of a person. Um, so it took a lot of getting used to like people like being there and watching me and like like being the focus of everything. Usually I don't like being the focus, but, um, you know, the more that I started to do shoots, the more I like being watched. <laughs> and it just turned into something, like right now it's supernatural. <laughs> do you prefer to work as a solo creator or with studios? Um, so right now I work mostly for studios, but... It's probably like a, uh, I'd say 70-30 split. So 30% is my own stuff. Um, and I really enjoy that as well. It's just a different kind of feel. So studios are more like professional and like rigid with the schedule and like what we're going to perform and who's going to be there and like a very strict like, like this is how much footage we need. And after this amount of time, we'll, you know, kind of wrap it up and finish. And then my own stuff is very, like, it's more relaxed. It's kind of like, go with the flow, whatever happens, happens, you know. Um, so it's just a different feel. Um, and I, I can't really say I prefer one over the other. But Would you be able to tell us which is more profitable? Um, probably my own, uh, my own stuff. Just because for studios, you get... Um, the amount of money right then and there, but you don't make anything after that. So if the video sells really, really well, you won't make any, any, anything extra from that versus your own production. Um, sure. It's a slower buildup, but you know, I'm still making money off of stuff that I made three years ago and it all adds up. <laughs> don't porn producers offer you more for continued shoots? Nope. So uh, when you, um, when you get booked to work at a studio, it's negotiated like one flat rate and they pay you that rate. And, you know, if you work with them later on, maybe your rate will increase, but um, you don't get, like if it happens to be like an award-winning film, you won't get any extra money <laughs> from that. Just whatever rate you initially agreed on. Have you ever had any privacy issues? Um, so not too much. I've had, you know, everyone has the creepy stalkers. Um, I've had people, you know, like message me with my legal name and, you know. I know that for many workers, privacy concerns can be terrifying. Do you have any advice for them? Right. Yeah. So, I mean... It's it's a tough scenario because, you know, you can't just tell people to ignore it because, you know, if it's something that gets to the point of someone stalking you, you can't you can't ignore that. Um, but it is just like one of the downsides of being in this industry is people are going to find out who you are, like no matter how careful you are, if you never have any documents or, you know, if you don't say your legal name or anything, someone's going to find out who you are and it's 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 really creepy <laughs> why did you make the choice to go into studio productions rather than focusing on only fans um yeah so starting as a solo creator i posted a lot of stuff on social media and studios started reaching out asking if i would be interested in shooting for them 
So I was like, yeah, you know, I'll give it a try. And then the more people that I shot for, the more studios reached out and it just kind of happened naturally. So really everything just kind of fell into place for you? Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, you know, I, I kind of went the non-traditional route. I never had an agent or, you know, I, I didn't start out like, you know, knowing that I wanted to shoot for studios. I, it just kind of happened. <laughs> Which website, platform, or studio did you find to be the most beneficial? Yeah, so uh, when I first started out, I started on OnlyFans and ManyVids. Um, and they were both, you know, relatively profitable. Um, but the first, like, major studio that hired me um, was Mike Adriano. Um, and, like, like his sites. Like, I had worked for some smaller studios in Phoenix. But um, once he hired me... You previously mentioned you had a husband. Does he accompany you on your shoots? Um, so when I first started in the industry, he came with me more often. Uh, but now that I'm more established and I'm traveling um, a lot of places and it's easier for me to vet people, um, usually he doesn't come with me. Um, but if it's like content stuff, like if it's my own production, usually he'll be the one doing the camera. So, <laughs> so he'll be there with me. Does your husband work with you on your scenes? Um, Every now and then, like we don't really do a lot of like one-on-one -on -one stuff but if if there's like an orgy or a gangbang or something of course I'll jump in. <laughs> um, but he prefers more like you know the camera work and not have the scene stuff you and your husband are swingers right is he also sleeping with other women right yeah we have the same you know i don't i'm not one of those like between both of us there's really no jealousy like he's not a jealous person but i'm not a jealous person as long as we're safe about it and like, if he sleeps with someone, you know, make sure that they're tested, make sure that they're safe and everything. And, you know, same, same here. So as long as we're safe about it and honest about it, um, the communication is really the biggest thing. Can you give some advice for people in monogamous relations on how to deal with jealousy? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, when I first started the industry, it wasn't, it wasn't automatically like this, you know, we had to kind of, uh, it was new territory for both of us. Um, I would say the, the the absolute biggest piece of advice I have is communication. Be honest about everything, you know, even if like it's being honest about like, hey, you know, I saw you do this and, you know, I don't know why, but I got a little bit jealous. Maybe can we talk about that and maybe why that happened? Um, and just kind of like one of our things is communication without fear of the other person like getting mad so like if he comes to me and is like hey you know I saw you do this can we can we talk about it because I had some feelings um he can tell me that without me being like oh well why are you having feelings you shouldn't be having that like <laughs> you know suck it up um and then vice versa and it's a process you know it doesn't happen overnight <laughs> small things such as no kissing for example right Right. Yeah. Little things like that. So when I first started out in porn, that was kind of one of our things, you know, I didn't really kiss anyone. And, you know, as we moved on, uh, it just kind of became a little less important. Like, okay, yeah, sure. I, th I think I would be okay if you started kissing other people or whatever. Um, so just like, like little baby steps, like meet your partner where they're at. You know, if there's something they want, that's kind of sacred to your relationship, you know, just, I think it's important to give them that because they're your partner. And like, I don't know, you can't, you can't expect everything to, you know, <laughs> and for us right now, like, like, we're in a very good place where we could pretty much do anything with anyone else that doesn't hurt our marriage. And for us, what we hold sacred is the emotional aspect. Um, so I will have sexual relationships with people, but I personally don't build um, like the emotional connections, you know, like I won't be going out on dates and, you know, saying I love you, you know, stuff like that. Could you tell us a bit about your experience with trolls on Twitter? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, to be in an industry like this, you gotta, you gotta have thick skin. You know, people are going to make comments. Um, people are going to try to, you know, get under your skin and annoy you, but you just gotta ignore it. I mean, I find like hate threads about me on Reddit or, you know, you just kind of gotta, you know, read through, laugh about it and just move on with your life <laughs> not let it bother you. <laughs> do you ever do fan meetups? Um, so I, I do conventions a lot. Um, the Exotica conventions are like a big place for fans to come and meet me. Um, I don't usually do like private meetups a lot just cause it's a safety concern. Um, but, uh, I am working on setting up later this year. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of planning, but I'm working on setting up a 100 guy fan gang thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's gonna happen. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's kind of just like like hey, here's your chance if you ever wanted to <laughs> to see what it's like. <laughs> Would your 100 guy gang bang include fans? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it like they got to go through the process of, you know, getting tested and it's going to be filmed. So they have to be OK being filmed. They're able to wear a mask, but we got to do all the appropriate legal stuff. Make sure everyone's safe. And... Are there any fans you would like to give a special shout out to? Um, yeah, yeah. So there is one fan in particular, and I know a lot of other girls probably have the same fan, but he's always super sweet and he's very supportive, always, um, you know, gives the girls compliments, always supports them by joining their OnlyFans or, you know, just just being very nice. On Twitter, he goes by Grim Joe, <laughs> but he's 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 very sweet. And I know a lot of a lot of girls in the industry love him. <laughs> Are the kinks in your own videos the same kinks in your personal life? <laughs> Absolutely. I um, I am one of those people, I won't film something if I'm not actually into it. <laughs> I think it's very important about, like, like, it's a very important aspect of being in this industry and for your own, like, longevity and mental health. I think it's important to, you know, film things that you personally like and not things that people are telling you to film but you don't like. <laughs> are these the same kinks that you share with your husband? No, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, like there's a couple things that um, we don't really do because he's not as into them, um, which is usually like, like more the like, like puke stuff <laughs> or like pee stuff. He's not really into that as much, but yeah, the anal, um, BDSM, like all of that stuff we're, we're super into. <laughs> Could you give us a breakdown of how you prepare for the extreme levels of anal play that you do? Um, yeah, absolutely. So like there's, I don't know, there's like two uh, categories of preparing versus like the cleaning. And then the second is like the stretching and making sure that you're like relaxed. Um, so for cleaning, like I'm not one of those people that star themselves um because I I do way too much anal to not eat <laughs> um so I eat normally um you know I don't skip meals I don't you know I, I don't have that kind of self-control <laughs> um but at the night like the night before um I take like a fiber supplement to kind of help like everything to stick together and then um the morning of I will ingest like an hour or two like cleaning um, and I use like a shower enema attachment. So it's kind of, sorry if it's TMI, but like I do my entire anal prep in the shower. <laughs> um, it just all kind of goes down the drain and, you know, it takes a while, but it's it's worth it instead of starving. Um, some people will take Imodium. I don't like that because um, it like messes up your digestive system and all of that. Um, but I just invest invest in the time to clean. And then for like stretching, um, I usually, it sounds weird, but I, 
prefer my own fest um, because I can kind of like, like use a lot of lube and like start with like a finger or two. Like I'm at the point where if I wanted to put my fist in my butt, it would just go right in. Um, I don't overstretch because you can make yourself uh, irritated. Um, you know, I don't like using toys to stretch because, you know, I might, I might irritate myself. Um, skin on skin is the best way in my mind. Um, but yeah, just like invest in the time in cleaning and don't overdo it with the stretching. You know, you got to be relaxed. You can't be irritated. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go slow, be consistent. Consistency is the biggest part. <laughs> Does reaching new heights in kink give you a feeling of accomplishment? Yeah, very, very much so. Um, I'm someone that likes challenges. And if it's like, especially if someone's like, oh, she could never do that, then it makes me want to do that. <laughs> um, but want to do it like in a safe way, you know, not just like hurt myself in the process, but <laughs> being able to do it and being like, oh, yeah, I could do it again, too. <laughs> like. <laughs> Do you have any favorite performers? Yeah, for sure. Um, one of my favorite performers, I've worked with him a lot, and he was the one that kind of like helped me get into everything, showed me how to start up OnlyFans and many vids. Is uh, Richard Mann. <laughs> um, I've shot with him probably hundreds of times now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's one of my favorite performers to work with. Um, as far as girls go, um, my friend Adira Olor, um, might may or may not know her, but she's one of my best friends and uh, favorite people to work with as well. Um, another guy in the industry, he he goes his studio's name is Tadpole Studios. Um, he's the one that's helping me set up my 100 guy gangbang. So his thing is, it's more like amateur look. So he uses, you know, just regular average guys, um, dad bods, you know, like if, if you got like a smaller dick, if you're overweight, like you're, you're welcome in the tadpole shoots. And I love that. <laughs> so he's one of my best friends in the industry too. <laughs> Do you have a preferred body type? Not really. I mean, I, I am someone I, I just like, I don't know. I, I like bodies. I love, like, if you have a dick, I, I love, I love dicks. It doesn't matter the size, the length, whatever. And if, if you're a girl, like, I don't know. I, I just, I love bodies. I love people. <laughs> Could you tell us what's your preferred penis size? Um, Again, like I'm not super, like, not to say I'm not picky. I I love I don't know. Um, I would I would never say no to any size. I would say like if I had to choose like, like, a ideal one. It's gonna sound really weird, but like five to seven inches is ideal for me. It's I don't know. It's average. <laughs> But, you know, I've been with people, like, I've been with 12-inchers, and I've been with half-inchers, <laughs> and I love them all. <laughs> what are your favorite sex toys? I, I love my Hitachi. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> do you regularly do bondage? Uh, actually, my, my husband and I have a full-size, like, suspension rig built into our our room that's across the hall over there. <laughs> um, so we do a lot of rope. Um, and actually the shoot that I'm going to in New York tomorrow is a very heavy BDSM shoot. So it'll be fun. <laughs> what is your favorite position? Um, yeah, so I'm a doggy girl. I love doggy. <laughs> um, part of the reason I love it is because I also like being like choked in my hair fold. And it's just, I don't know, it's a great, it's a great position. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also like being on top, um, it's, which is kind of odd. I don't know that a lot of people would say that, but <laughs> but yeah, doggy and cowgirl. What do you think it is about submission that gets people aroused? 
like it could be a mixture of things. So I mentioned before that I like challenges. So maybe like in some in some sort of aspect of it, maybe it's it's the challenge of it. Um, I think I also kind of like the feeling of not being in control, even though I know I'm totally in control and I could stop it whenever I want, um, which makes me not want to stop it. <laughs> um yeah and I think you know a lot of a lot of um uh, parts of my life like I love like I am a control freak I like you know as I mentioned I like being in control of my schedule I like you know knowing what I'm going to do I like you know being in control of all of that and something about like being su submissive and kind of giving up that control is really nice I saw that you played World of Warcraft do you play video games in general um I play a variety of games. Uh, my my top two played are World of Warcraft and Minecraft. <laughs> it just depends on if I feel like killing things or being creative. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I'm 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 a little bit like if it's if it's on PC, I'm I'm a PC girl. When are the best times for fans to find you on different platforms? Um, yeah, so the best way to like schedule like a custom or like a Skype show, because like sometimes I'll do Skype dates and stuff are through my OnlyFans. Um, I love doing customs. I love like hearing everyone's fantasies and kind of being able to help make that come true. Um, and with like customs and stuff, uh, I usually... Like, I'm not one of those people that get a custom order and then, like, three months later, you still haven't got it. Usually, like, when I get a custom order, I'm, like, super excited about it. So, like, I'm getting it back to you, like, a couple days later. <laughs> um, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, OnlyFans is definitely the best place to hit me up about it. <laughs> what were the three biggest challenges you had to overcome as a performer? Okay, three biggest challenges. I would say the first one uh probably the social stuff because Alyssa I'm a very shy person and I went from being an engineer by myself in a lab to like um talking to a bunch of people every day <laughs> um especially when it comes to like expos and where I'm actually like meeting fans and talking to fans um it it was a lot to um to process at first um and, and learn so I would say that was a challenge um another challenge for me see, I'm trying to think this through um another challenge for me is probably getting um, probably like the uh lack of privacy stuff um and not necessarily like in a stalker way but like lack of privacy in the terms of like, if like, like in the terms of like the industry. So like, if I can't shoot because I have an embarrassing rash, you know, like people are gonna know about it. Or <laughs> like, like if I have a medical issue, if I go to the hospital, people are gonna know about it. You know, if you know, it's just uh, I don't I don't, I don't have a uh, private life anymore. <laughs> so that was kind of another challenge. Um, and then the third one. It was probably just with uh, with the uh, marriage. Not that it was, you know, rocky or challenging, but it's not like a lot of people are one person in this industry. You know, I'm like, it's me and my husband. We got to work through it together and um, grow together. And yeah, so I would say that was probably another kind of challenge of getting to where I am today too. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for even more exclusive content. Tell me in the comments what questions you would ask a porn star, and the best questions might be added to upcoming interviews.